Hi everyone, it's Andy. Welcome to a new season of Notre Dame Stories. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know about an exciting project we're working on. Notre Dame law students are actively involved in overturning wrongful convictions. In our series, we'll take you inside the cases, and you'll meet the students working to make sure justice is served. Be looking for this later this semester. Thanks for listening. As the national conversation about race and policing took center stage over the spring and summer, questions began surfacing over how police departments would respond. At Notre Dame, they were already working on an answer. Hi, I'm Carrie K. Shibata. I'm the chief of the Notre Dame Police Department and executive director of emergency management for the University of Notre Dame. I'm Mike Seaman. I'm the vice president of campus safety and university operations. Maddie Auberg. I'm a senior environmental science major. I'm a black student leader here at Notre Dame. In this episode, Notre Dame Stories brings you a conversation with campus leaders who helped craft a report on equitable policing on campus, a project that started several years ago, but one that took on new urgency over the summer as students lent their voices to the conversation. So, uh, Carrie Kay, I wonder if we could we could start with you. Um, let's talk big picture. So, we're talking about the uh, equitable policing report uh, released uh, recently. It may be a, a, a good idea to start with um, just kind of what is that and and what's included in that report, and then go from there. Sure. It, we realized that we hadn't always done the best job of of sharing with the university community how we approach policing and um, and the kind of police department that we're, that we're striving to be for the university. And as there were questions being raised about policing in the United States in general and also specifically on campus, we thought it was important to, to reach out to the community and, and say, this is who we are, this is, this is who we want to be, um, and when you need, to, need things from us and, and want to share concerns with us and things like that, here, here's how you can do that um, and, and try to be as transparent as possible with our community. So it's a, a statement of our philosophy on policing and our focus on collaborating with and partnering with the, the university community. And then it goes into some specific initiatives that we've under, undertaken either over several years or some that started more recently, um, specifically related to equity and policing and making sure that um, that we are really here to support all members of the Notre Dame community. Mike, anything you would add to that? No, I think it's, I think it's a lot of good work over the last couple of years, right? And it's been Carrie Kay and the officers and the department's effort. But I think when it happened in June or July, when we started interacting with Maddie and all of our students, it really offered an opportunity for it to crystallize and come together and and take it even a step further. I would say that that equity in policing uh, has always been something that's been Im- important to, to the Notre Dame Police Department, that um, even as early as 2015, when, um, when, the pres- when President Obama had the president's 21st century policing initiative and task force. We've been taking a look at, at the best practices that are put out by, by groups like that, by professional organizations um, in, in campus law enforcement and, and law enforcement in general, and trying to make sure that we are both consistent with best practices and at the same time, uniquely Notre Dame and responsive to what Notre Dame needs. Um, so it's been an ongoing effort. Clearly this summer, this conversation came to the forefront across the country and and we were very happy to engage with our community in that conversation. And, and there have been some things, whether it be, you know, reporting out and explaining to, to people what are these things that we've been doing or saying there may be some other things that, that we can take a look at and, and work on together. Maddie, this seems like a good time to, to turn to you. Uh, Carrie Kay mentioned, you know, reaching out to the community and, and, and hearing from them. And Mike alluded to it, too. 
I'm curious how how you became involved. What's been your experience, and how did you get involved uh, in this initiative specifically? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, with the the murder of George of George Floyd and the way that that really captivated the the nation's attention, and um, but also really captivated the emotions of people of color um, in the U.S. and around the around the globe, um, where I can look at or I, I watched that video of, of George Floyd's murder. And I saw myself under under that police officer's knee. I saw my father, I saw my brother, I saw my cousins, I saw my uncles, I saw my aunts, I saw my grandma. And the way that um, the emotional reaction um, to, to that incident and to other incidents throughout history, um, especially in the American context, um, uh, inside it, I keep saying it's an emotional, it's an emotional response, but um, in the sense of anger, in the sense of pain, but of also action. Um, and uh, myself, as a as a student leader, and um, and other leaders um, on Notre Dame's campus that are black and um, of students of color, um, we got together and said that we need to do something um, to to stand in solidarity with those fighting for justice, but also against these injustices themselves, um, uh, and and stand against them and stand in solidarity um, with what's going on in in our nation, but also um, in the things that are going on on our campus. Um, kind of the first step that um, that myself and other student leaders took over the summer was to write a um, to write a statement and a call for action um, to the camp, to the Notre Dame community, um, and that's on the BSA website. Um, and that brought that brought us together um, as we kind of compiled our experiences, compiled our um, our points of view about our um, about what it's like to be at Notre Dame, um, and put together this amazing and and really influential um, influential piece. Um, and that led into um, that that led into the meetings with administrators and with students. Um, and so one one theme that we um, that we wanted to um, to hold the university accountable to, but also hold ourselves accountable to, is transparency. Um, I mean, if we look at the most recent um, inclusive uh, inclusive campus student survey, um, if you look at the sense of belonging that's div um, divided by um, or, or broken down by race. 40% of black students at Notre Dame do not feel a sense of belonging at, at the university. Um, whereas I believe around 50% of white students, um, or actually, yeah, 56% of white students do feel a sense of belonging at Notre Dame. And there's a humongous discrepancy there um, that's not just by coincidence. It's um, not by chance. And there's, um, there's um, experiences that, I, that I've had um, that I've shared with both Carrie Kay and Mike um, with NDPD um, there's other experiences that other um, Notre Dame students um, have shared um, as a part of these meetings that um, that both Mike and Carrie Kay um, were talking about a second ago um, that really highlight the um, the the strides that um, Notre Dame needs to take in order to make this community um, uh, community one for for ev for every person, every every student, every faculty member, every staff member, um, and really make the Notre Dame family concept and term means something for, for all people, because it often doesn't. Well, I mean, I can talk about a, a personal um, a personal anecdote, actually, um, where I, during my freshman year, um, basically, I was just decompressing on a, on a late night slash early morning walk, um, and I was stopped by a um, NDP officer and asked um, if I went to the university, um, where I was going, what I was doing um, in the middle of South Quad, um, and which made absolutely zero sense. And I mean, I wasn't doing anything to um, anything provoking or endangering the campus community. Um, and so there was there was no need for um, for me to even be addressed, um, to be even be approached in the first place. Um, and so you can only you can only assume and um, you can only assume that uh, that the reason I was I was approached is because of the color of my skin. Um, and that's something that's unacceptable. And as I continue to reflect on it in light of of everything else or of everything that's going on um it kind of takes me back to even when i was learning how to drive and i had to have a conversation with my dad about um uh, if i get pulled over what am i doing because um or like what is my behavior um what is my behavior like how am i presenting myself in, in front of this officer uh, because i can lose my life and that's a very serious conversation that is it replays in my head every time i get behind the wheel um and it just makes this um this so um, just this conversation and, and these and what's going on um, in our country so relevant.
um, well, well, in our country, but also on our campus, so relevant. Um, uh, and then, and then, kind of us uh, talking about uh, our, about those anecdotes, and this is actually what I was referring to earlier. Um, that really set the stage for the transparency and honesty, and um, and really desire for mutual understanding um, throughout the throughout the rest of our conversations. I think Maddie and all of his fellow students they really did put themselves out there, right? And there was a spirit of authenticity. They were genuine with their emotions and their feelings and their experiences. And, and when you enter into conversation and dialogue with others, you notice that right away, right? It, it, it just becomes really apparent. And I, I know for myself, and I think for Carrie Kay, it's, it really struck us. It, it just, it really hits home. And so then you enter into this dialogue engagement of, if they're going to put themselves out there, we're going to put ourselves out there and just be very, as Maddie said, transparent. And when you enter a dialogue with a kind of attitude, I wish I could see that across every um, uh, group across campus on every matter, things just become really real and, and genuine. And that's when I think real learning and advancement and just um, maturation happens. It, and I want to add, to Maddie's earlier point of his personal story and, and what he was drawing on, when he shared that story with us, it just, it took us back. It was just like, right, again, he was authentic, he was honest, he was transparent of what that meant to him as a person and how, you know, that has formed his mind and, and how he, that was really, he put himself out there and that just, that just leveled the playing field. That just, you know, that caught your attention and you're like, this is real, right? This isn't a story. This is not um, about hearsay of what happened on another campus or another city or in another state. This happened here uh, to one of our students, to one of our community members. And uh, we were involved with that. And so that was just, I don't wanna say it was a game changer um, in the discussion, but it just really brought everybody. It didn't push people apart, it drew people in. Mm. And, um, and that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for Maddie. I'm grateful for his, his fellow students, his colleagues, our, our colleagues. Um, that, that was a game changing moment. I think it was, it was clearly not a one side versus another side conversation. It was, it was definitely a, a partnership conversation of true learning from each other and true listening to each other and figuring out how do we move forward in the right direction for the, for the University of Notre Dame and, and all of its members. And one of the things that we implemented in response to some of those reports, certainly we know that if, if someone is stopped, um, it can be at the initiative of the officer itself, themselves observing something that, that they feel they need to talk, stop someone and talk with them. But it can also be as a response to a call that someone makes to, to the police. And so one of the, the policies that we implemented was that we really want to dig into those calls when, when people do call and make sure that they're not calling and um, reporting someone whose appearance alone is, is suspicious to them and, and could be based on a bias. But we want our dispatchers as they're taking those calls to really dig in and, and find out what is the behavior that, that you think is suspicious. Um, and then we coach our officers that even when they do respond to those, that they should observe themselves. And if they don't see suspicious behavior, you know, they don't have to approach the person and stop the person. Um, at the same time, I do want to clarify that does not by any means say that we do not want people to call. We absolutely want people to call when they have a concern. Um, we're just going to have dispatchers ask good questions and, and try to dig in and more and make sure that it's, it's based on a suspicious behavior rather than an appearance. The national conversation around um, policing really came to the fore, you know, in June, July. Um, and, and we touched on it earlier, and I wonder if we could just revisit it really quickly. I'm curious what impact that had on this conversation. It sounds like it, it prompted Maddie, you and your student group, to make that statement. But from uh, Carrie Kay and Mike, from your perspective, was this some kind of reinforcement that you were on the right track? Or... Um, did it augment your thinking in, in any way? I think looking at the national conversation has been interesting. Um, we, I keep seeing news about different police departments implementing new policies and practices and things like that. And it's, 
it's nice to see that many of the things that that we've been doing others are are doing as well and it's also interesting to see the things that maybe we haven't implemented yet that we can also start to think about and i think at the very least it underscored the, the just sheer importance of the entire body of work this entire effort it I don't think any of us needed validation to want to get better and to do the right thing all the time. But man, it, when, when Maddie and the students approached this, it just underscored the need to do this and the need to do it now. And, and I think Maddie hit it and Carrie Kay's mentioned it is action, right? Um, sure. You want to have good dialogue and discourse, but what's going to, what's going to change. And um, it, there was so much good that happened prior to it, but, it's we're constantly evolving and constantly progressing. And so that isn't a one time thing. It's a continuous thing. And this opportunity this summer just brought us together in a, in a very special way out of a very tragic incident, but it brought everyone together. Maddie, let me ask you, do you feel like um, progress ha has been made as a, re as a result of your and other students involvement in this? Um, I, I mean, I, I want to say yes, um, be, and thank you to both Mike and Carrie Kay for um, responding to the things that we talked about in our meetings and, um, and like very promptly where um, I remember after our first, our first um, meeting, um, we kind of outlined all the things that we wanted to, we wanted to see. Um, both Mike and Carrie Kay had input about some of the things they were doing, um, and we left with a list of action items. By the next meeting, like a week or a week and a half later, that, that list of action items was almost fully completed. Um, and so that's that re that's really a testament to the um, to the dedication of both Carrie Kay and Mike um, in, in getting these things done. Um, but at the same time, um, even though this progress that progress is going on over there, there are still students that are having these negative experiences on campus. Um, and so obviously there's there's some disconnect that um, that uh, I guess is a, that calls for um, for a need for more of these conversations and and for more. Um, uh, but I, I guess beyond conversations, more action and um, actually identifying what the problems are. Mike Carey Kay, I guess I would ask you the, the same question. What what does the future um, look like? And um, do we feel? I mean, what are your thoughts on on where we stand now and and kind of the the baseline and and the undergirding that this report provides for for progress in this area? Yeah, I'll start. It's, I think it's a new day, right? Um, I think if anybody knows Carrie Kay or knows me, is we're never happy with the status quo. We always want to be learning, um, developing, getting better. And it's, it, you're not aspiring to one single goal. It's just you're aspiring to a process, right, of never stopping. And the more information you get, the more interaction you get, the more you relate to others, the better you will be. I, I think Northern Police... Um, and Notre Dame Fire and everybody who serves campus from a safety side, we're, we're serving, our job is to serve the campus community um, and every single member of that campus community. And so I, I want to say that we're never going to be content where we are. We're always just going to constantly be pushing ourselves. Um, and, and so when people enter into that dialogue with you or into that partnership or that collaboration, whatever you want to call it, it just becomes more meaningful. I, I would be... Um, wrong to say that, that I think we're perfect. I know that, that we're not, um, that we're made up of, of human, an organization made up of human beings that are very well intentioned and, and have great heart and passion for, for all the best for Notre Dame. But, um, but we will learn that there are things that, that we can and should do better, both as individuals and as an organization. And we're um, excited to be in conversation conversation with our community about that, about what it, it needs from its police department and how we need to, to refine our work to best serve the, the community. Um, we definitely want to deepen our engagement and are, are working on that um, with with Maddie and, and other student leaders um, to, to continue to build upon the, the foundation of relationship that we've started and to expand that among our officers and, and our students on campus. We've linked to the Notre Dame Police Department's report on equity in policing and the Notre Dame Black Student Association's statement and call to action with this episode on our website, stories.nd.edu.
Notre Dame Stories is produced by the Office of Public Affairs and Communications. I'm your host, Andy Fuller. Our theme music is by Alex Mansour. 